The J7E is a rank 7 11.0 fighter currently sitting at the end of the Chinese fighter line. Despite being originally based off of the Russian MiG-21, the J7E is a completely unique Chinese design. So let's dive in and see what the Chinese are capable of creating and if it is able to stack up against the other nation's top tier fighters. The J-7 program began in 1962 when the Soviet Union granted China licensed manufacturing rights for the MiG-21 F-13 and its Tumansky R-11 F-300 engine. As part of the agreement, three complete airframes meant to serve as pattern aircraft, 20 CKD kits for the initial production, and technical documentation were transferred to China. However, the agreement would break down and Chinese engineers would find that several important technical documents were missing. They would then attempt to fill in the gap left by these documents themselves. They succeeded in some areas, like completely re-engineering a new hydraulic system, and in others they failed, like with the variable geometry air intake, which was not present on the initial Chinese-built planes. The first entirely Chinese manufactured J-7 would make its maiden flight on January 17, 1966. However, production would be slow due to the cultural revolution that caused general part shortages. One of the more major ones was the lack of availability of engines for the new planes. Only a dozen J-7s were manufactured before production was shifted from the Xinyang factory to a newly built Chengdu factory to allow Xinyang to focus on the J-8. After the move, the Chengdu Aircraft Corporation, CAC for short, would make several modifications like reintroducing the second cannon since the PL-2 was not ready yet, adding a variable geometry air intake, and the installation of a brake parachute. The new aircraft would be designated the J-7-1. Still, production of the aircraft would remain low due to terrible teething problems. Due to these teething problems, the J-7-1 would not see service in Vietnam like the Xinyang F-5 and F-6, but would still receive its baptism by fire during the war. Between 1967 and 1971, PLAAF interceptor squadrons guarding China's southern border equipped with the J-7-1 would down six American aircraft that intruded into Chinese airspace. In 1974, the CAC began development on the J-7-2. This new plane featured a new Type 2 ejection seat, a rear-hinged canopy, an improved WP-7B engine that offered higher thrust and greater reliability, and finally, the PL-2 AAM had finished development and became a standard part of the J-7's armament. Another change to note was that the variable geometry air intake was removed as the Chinese-built one was unreliable. The J-7-2 made its maiden flight on December 30, 1978, with production beginning in the early 1980s. Despite the need for the replacement of the J-5 and J-6, the PLAAF received a lower priority for the J-7-2 than foreign buyers as the Chinese industry was in need of a cash injection to further technological developments. There would be several sub-variants of the J-7-2 developed for the export market in the 1980s that would improve its radar, navigation equipment, and weapons. In 1987, the CAC began a major redevelopment of the J-7-2 using experience gained from developing the sub-variants. This new design was meant to counter the spread of the American F-16, so emphasis was placed on improving the aerodynamics and avionics. By far the most noticeable change was the redesign of the tried-and-true MiG-21 Delta Wing to a double Delta Wing. The sweep on the outer wing was reduced from 57 to 42 degrees and the leading edge flaps were added. The trailing edge of the wing was also kinked forward outboard of the flaps. This not only increased the maneuverability of the plane, but also doubled the internal fuel load. The WP-13F engine was added, which boasted higher power, better reliability, and longer service life. The avionics suite was completely replaced. The new one included a Type 226 Pulse Doppler radar rangefinder, a JT-1 HUD, a Type 8430 air data computer, a JD-3 TACAN, a built-in active jammer, and a flare and chaff dispenser. The J-7E was also the first Chinese fighter to use a HOTAS control setup. The Chinese designers used new technologies like CAD and CAM software, laser testing, high-pressure water cuts, and composite materials when developing the J-7E. The J-7E prototype would make its maiden flight in May 1990. 
Flight testing was completed in 1992, and the J-7E began entering PLAAF and PLANAF service in 1995. The J-7E would also be exported to other nations like Pakistan and Bangladesh under the designation F-7MG. The J-7E would remain in production until 2003 when it was superseded by the J-7G. In-game, the J-7E is equipped with the Marconi Type 226. The Type 226 is a Chinese copy of the GEC Marconi Sky Ranger radar. This is a radar rangefinder, so in-game it's pretty pointless, at least for RB and AB. In simulator battles, it can be useful as the HUD will display a circle around any targets locked with the radar. For defensive avionics, the J7E is equipped with the SPO-10 RWR. This RWR is pretty bad by 11.0 standards. It works by using lights in one or two corners to indicate the direction you are being locked from within a 45 degree arc. You also get 72 countermeasures after researching a rank 1 modification. With this many flares, you shouldn't be running out that often. Finally, you get a full ballistics computer. So you have CCIP for your guns, bombs, and rockets, as well as CCRP for your bombs. I've heard people claim that the base J7E did not have a ballistics computer in real life, though I wasn't able to confirm or deny this as my sources did not mention this and I can't check any Chinese sources as I don't know the language and I don't know anyone who could translate it for me. Still, having the ballistics computer is much appreciated as it is currently only one of two planes that get one in the Chinese tech tree. For air-to-ground missions, the J-7E gets access to 250 and 500 kilogram dumb bombs, as well as the Type 90-1 and Type 130-2 dumbfire rocket pods. The Type 90-1 rockets are okay, but they're nothing to write home about, and the dumb bombs are dumb bombs. However, the Type 130-2 rockets are fantastic. These are the Chinese equivalent to the Zuni and S-13 heavy unguided rockets found in the American and Russian tech trees. These are very effective against light armor targets and can kill MBTs with a direct hit. With 4 per rocket pod and 4 hard points, you can only carry 16 total. Though the ballistics computer will help make up for that lack of ordnance by improving accuracy. For air-to-air -air missiles, you get two options. The first being the PL-2 that can be unlocked by researching the Rank 2 modification. This is a 10G IR missile with a cage seeker head. For top tier matches, this missile is useless. Thankfully, you don't have to ever use these anymore as the J7E now starts with two PL-5B stock. At Rank 4, you can research the PL-5B modification, which allows you to carry up to four at a time. This is a 20G rear aspect IR missile with an uncaged seeker head. The missile has good range, longer than that of the 9J, but not as long as the 9G. Despite only being able to reach Mach 2.2, this missile is very fast thanks to its crazy acceleration. Though this acceleration comes at a cost, as the missile isn't able to pull as hard as it travels at a higher speed, making it a tough missile to use in close-in dogfights. Though you can make up for that poor turning performance by leading the missile before launch, thanks to its large off-boresight launch capability, and like the 9G, this missile doesn't have a launch G limit, allowing you to pull some crazy turns and still be able to fire this missile. Do keep in mind that this missile loves flares, so if your target is flaring, don't even bother launching this missile. For the gun armament, the J7E is equipped with a single Type 30-1 30mm cannon. The gun comes with 60 rounds of ammo and a fire rate of 1,000 rounds per minute, giving you a trigger time of 3.6 seconds. The gun is the Chinese copy of the Russian NR-30, so it hits hard, but has a low ammo count. So be conservative with your bursts if you don't want to run out of ammo too soon. The stock grind isn't that bad on the J7E after the PL-5 became the stock missile. You get two solid missiles and stock performance of the J7E is plenty to win fights against all but the top dogfighters. Or you have the option of ground pounding with the Type 90-1 rockets if you don't feel like getting into air combat early on. For modifications, you want to get the flares as soon as you can and then focus on the missile and performance mods before going back for the ground ordnance and gun modifications. The J7E is powered by a single WP-13F turbojet engine capable of producing 4,100 kg of force dry and 6,670 kg of force in afterburner. This thrust, combined with the light airframe, gives the J7E excellent acceleration. 
you can quickly accelerate up to Mach 1 on the deck before you'd start to struggle to accelerate further. This is when the light airframe starts to be a problem, as you will rip if you pass 740 knots or about Mach 1.2 on the deck. The maneuverability of the J7E is fantastic thanks to the double delta wing. The only plane that reasonably stands a chance in a one circle against you is the MLD. Though like other delta wing aircraft, you will bleed speed quickly in a turn. This can be helpful when you need to slow down to get inside your opponent's turn, but it can also leave you on low energy with several enemies pouncing on you. When it comes to playing the J7E, I like to climb up to around 10,000 feet at the start of the game. This will give me a bit of altitude that I can then exchange for speed if I need to without being too high to make myself an easy sparrow target. I may still be targeted by sparrows, but as long as I stay around Mach 1, they aren't too hard to dodge. So once I've leveled off, I'll be on the lookout for enemies. The J7E doesn't have a radar, so I'll have to rely on the good old Mark 1 eyeball to spot their dots. If I spot someone above me, I'll try to sneak up and get a PL5 off on them. If they're below me, then I'll just dive on them and go for either the PL5 or the guns. You need to stay fast early game and make sure not to get dragged into a dogfight. If you get slow, you're just asking for a third party to come in and kill you with a missile from your blind spot. So stay fast and work with your teammates to thin out the enemies. If you can survive into the mid to late game, the J7E will really start to shine. This is where you can put that exceptional maneuverability of the J7E to good use in wiping out the remaining enemies. When getting into a one-on-one, -on -one, you want to stay around 400 knots as this is where you turn the best. It's a balancing act though, as the jet will want to quickly slow down when pulling hard at this speed. If you have some altitude to spare, you can point your nose down as you turn so you don't lose as much speed. Try not to fall below 300 knots if you can help it. If you do find yourself in a low speed turn fight, you can use your takeoff flaps at below 250 knots to give yourself that extra edge to get your nose on target for the kill so you can then speed up again. Alright, let's wrap things up by going over the pros and cons before ending with the final verdict. Starting off with the pros as usual, the great maneuverability of the J7E is thanks to its defining feature, the double delta wing. With this, you'll easily be able to outturn pretty much all jets you'll come up against. Alongside the great maneuverability, you get some good acceleration. This is one of the quicker accelerating planes at this BR, at least for low end acceleration. The ballistics computer are also much appreciated. This combined with the Type 130s is why the J7E is the best high tier CAS option for the Chinese tech tree. Moving over to the cons, while the double delta wing does give you excellent maneuverability, it also causes you to bleed speed quickly. If you're not careful, you will quickly find yourself stalling out and a free kill for any enemy close by. The gun on the J7E is not forgiving. While it does hit hard, you only have 60 rounds forcing you to be very conservative with your bursts if you want your ammo to last. Lastly, the lack of a proper radar or SAR missiles does put it at a disadvantage when running up against lots of planes that do have those systems at this BR. Overall, the J7E is currently one of the best dogfighters in the game, alongside having a decent ground attack capability despite its low carry capacity. While most of the Chinese tech tree is copy and paste, this is one of the few unique Chinese designs we currently see in game. It is a very enjoyable plane to fly and worth the grind even if you have played some of the copy and paste planes. If you've flown the J7E, what are your thoughts on it? If you haven't, are you now interested in grinding for it? Let's discuss in the comments. And as always, thanks for watching and I hope you all have a wonderful day.